I'm just going to show you around the latest machine that I bought. This is a rebuilt machine I bought from Dominion Air in Salem, Virginia. This head has been rebuilt. The controller has been replaced. This is a 2018 Protratrax SMX controller. What they do with their business is they buy used equipment, broke down, and rebuild it. So they said they put $3,000 in parts and rebuilding the head. I'll show you a couple things of what I know about running it. I don't know a whole lot, so I bought it so I can learn and hopefully be able to machine new parts that I haven't been able to do before. Here's your gear. So you can put in high, neutral, or low. So if you want to change gears, you just push it in, move it, and you're going to act like you're pulling it out to lock it in place so that's neutral. That's low and high. You want to turn up the spindle speed. This right here will operate or increase the spindle speed. That's the low end of it. You're going to run it this way to turn up high. You want to start at the lowest possible speed before you start turning up the speed. So don't insert the tool. All of a sudden turn the spindle on it. It's at the highest speed. It says not to do that right there. I think this is forward or reverse, or counterclockwise or clockwise, however you look at it. I don't know what this does. I've been trying to figure that out. I've been thinking that might be power for Z if you're trying to get it to move automated. You can unlock the quill here where you move this down as if it's like a drill press. This is a three-axis CNC machine. So if I want to lock it back, now it's locked. So you can use it CNC now because I did that. So this can be used manually as well as with CNC. So you can just pull that out, run it in. Works the same for the other side. You just Move that up. And do the same with this one. This right here runs off of 110, but the machine itself runs off of three phase power. So I'm getting that hooked up. I've got a three phase converter headed over here. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. That was an additional $3,300. This is a power draw bar. So you can push in and out. It sounds like an air ratchet. What it is, is you have a threaded rod or I guess bolt, you could say. It comes down through here and will you hold the tool up and it th you push the button, threads it in or out, depending if you're taking the tool out or putting it in. This is a coolant for the machine. I think the coolant sits down here somewhere. We'll follow the line and see where it goes. The coolant hose goes down here. I really don't know how I would drain the coolant. I guess you can just add coolant by putting it back in the back of the machine. I'll have to, I should really look that up before I start just pouring coolant in the back of the machine somewhere. See this bed right here is just to, to collect all the draining coolant as well as through here, through the table. These lines come through and drain the coolant back down to the, the bed there. You can put these T-bolt T clamps through the center here to hold parts. That's probably another thing I could show you, but there's a lot of different types of clamping, or I guess clamping tools, you could say. I've been looking into it. You can get things where you can have angles and stuff. You can mount a vise on the table. There are two vices mounted. You can see the prints of where they were. You can also machine up to six parts at one time so you put six parts on the table indicate them out and run the programs with one tool if you had a tool changer it could change the tool over do a whole process but i'm gonna have to manually change the tools over so what that would look like is i'd run one program for a bore indicate six parts out It'll run the bore on each one until it does all six. 
Now I have to come over, change the tool to the radius tool, and then it will. Then I can basically run the program in all six to finish up the radius on all the parts. I think that's pretty much all I know about it for now. If you're wanting to learn a little bit more about how this machine works and how to operate it, comment below and I'll give you some information of what I know. And if you're wanting to learn with me as I learn how to use this machine, I'll be glad to make videos on how to do that as well. This is the first CNC machine I bought. I bought this one not knowing how to use it. I had to basically learn through failure how to learn how to use this machine. I paid about $23,500, maybe, maybe with or plus shipping. I can't really remember for sure. It's been five years or so. So I didn't have any training on this machine. I couldn't figure out how to turn it on for the longest time. And the reason was because the emergency switch was pressed. Other things that were going on with it is I couldn't figure out how to unlock the hand jaws, which are the, are the hand wheels. I later searched that on YouTube. There's several different ways to do that. Couldn't really figure out how to write, write programs. I just ended up just writing them, testing them, seeing what it did. And that's how I learned through failure on this one. I've gotten pretty decent at it, but I need to go and learn some 3D modeling and setting up CAD programs to do some of the projects I want to do and make things a little bit faster. Haas wants $1,800 a day for training. You can get training if you buy a new machine for, I think, $2,000. And I don't know how many days that is. That may just be for like a training course. So if you don't have training and you got to train yourself, a lot of times you just have to learn through failure. It's frustrating and a lot of people aren't willing to do that, but you have to have a will to want to do the work to be able to be successful in, in your machining business. To get my money back on this machine, I need to machine about 250 parts. You have to always also think about electricity, tool costs, these types of things. I'm not quite done buying everything that I need for this machine. I'm predicting I'll have about $25,000 in it by the time I finish paying for all the tools that I need. These types of things aren't cheap. That's why machine costs are the way price the way they are. The company I bought this from also said that they had one guy that bought a machine just like that one that did one job that paid for the machine. I've never heard of such machine jobs that pay that much money, but if you can get such a return on investment, that makes a lot of sense to be able to buy a machine that can make you $45,000 to pay for it. 